Hello guys, this is Stranger Hydra 9 here with Strike and T.O.R. Bazinski for our first ever triple commentary. And our, our topic today is going to actually be PC gaming versus Xbox gaming in terms of, unlike last video, mechanics. Here we're actually going to be talking about the directions that the different consoles are going to go. Uh, maybe touching a little bit on the hopefully uh, soon to come out Steam box. And a couple other things that are coming out in that sense. And basically how, you know, the competitive scene is going where it seems like on PC gaming, at least in my opinion, things are getting progressively more competitive. And uh, on Xbox, we're actually going a little bit of a, a temporary shift towards general gaming. So so what are you guys thinking? Go ahead and introduce yourselves, starting with Spazinski. Uh, well, okay. Ha hello. This is, my name is Spazinski. And um, in terms of directions of consoles, I uh, I don't I don't want to actually say, say this in terms of picking one over the other, but I don't I want to say that I think that um, I think the Xbox has got a more brighter future than the PlayStation does if it's going to bring out a PlayStation Four. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think, Drake? Well, I think the Xbox and the PC. One, we got the PC with the games that are way more competitive. That's what I like. I'm a very competitive person, and I just think PC is going to be the future. Because gamers are always generally competitive, and they do like competitive games. So. Well, I think that's really the, the subdivision, is I definitely think. I think it's like you're kind of saying things are getting more divided than they used to be. It used to be that I think there was a lot of people that were moderately competitive. I think as time is going on, there's two main groups. There's the I'm playing competitively group or the I'm playing, you know, casually group. And I think those groups are starting to divide. Now, in terms of what Bazinski is talking about in terms of the PlayStation, I, I totally agree with you, Bazinski. I think I was just talking with a notable YouTuber, uh, Stampy Long, knows about this probably a week ago. And uh, in my opinion, it, it, the PlayStation has very little chance to topple... Uh, the Xbox 720 um, on this next generation. I, I just don't see it. Um, yeah. so, so let's talk about that for a quick couple seconds. Um, basically, their their scheme in how they're going to take back uh, the consoles is that they're going to allow user content that you can choose how much you want it to be and things of that nature. What are you guys thinking about this? And do you really believe that the PlayStation has any chance to retake Xbox this coming generation. Nope, not at all. Well, PlayStation's, yeah. I don't, have, I don't have much faith in PlayStation, to be honest. PlayStation itself, what holds it up is mainly its, its uh, specific um, console, uh, specific console games that come out for the PlayStation only. So Wait. that's yeah, that's like stuff Uncharted like that. and God of War. Those are two yeah. huge games. Well, this is this is a good, in my opinion, this is a very good indicator of how our console's doing. Your console is wow. We got a spy behind us. Be careful, guys. There's a I guy backstabbing. I'll take him out now. So anyway, a console is a large a large amount of how well your console is doing is down to uh, how many exclusives you have. And PlayStation just slowly but surely has been losing almost every single exclusive they have. I mean, look, they lost, you know, Devil May Cry. They lost Metal Gear Solid. I mean, literally, they lost God of War because now God of War is now on the, uh, you know, the, the yeah. Xbox. Literally, all they can say, and I really feel like this is the matter. Oh, well, you know, there is this game on called Uncharted. And that's pretty much it. Like, they have to hold Uncharted because Uncharted is the last yeah. chance yeah. to really, you know, <laughs> what's up with the fuck? I feel like the Uncharted. I feel like the Uncharted series is slowly dying out too. Me like. too. I feel like Uncharted, and and I'm a huge Naughty Dog fan, and I want to say this to fans, and and I'm a huge PlayStation 2 fanboy, but oh, yeah. it's like literally, I feel like at this point Uncharted, I feel like the prime is behind them. Uncharted is not coming out with anything new. Its multiplayer is very. You know, basically like a, a grade B uh, Gears of War. It is a good, I mean, it is a good multiplayer, but it's nothing amazing. 
Um, yeah. And it's nothing that's going to, like, you know, really make me purchase a PS4. Um, you know, it's just, a, I mean, I, I can't see it personally. Um, so, I, I mean, in terms of getting back on the topic of, of PC versus console gaming, what what basically me and, and T.R. Bazinski, and I've discussed this with Strike 2, is that the huge amount of competitive games that are coming out on the PC, like, look, you got Team Fortress 2, you've got Dota 2 coming out, you have uh, League of Legends, you have all these games, and, and for those of you guys who don't know, me and Drake are going to soon produce some League of Legends content for you guys, oh, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. But um, it, it's amazing to me that it's like pretty much the majority of PC content is going to these games that, you know, are being live streamed, that does professional environments. And I feel like the console, look at where it's going. Like, look at back in the Halo 2 days and Modern Warfare 2, you know, there was a lot of competitive games on the Xbox. And now it's actually like it. more and more games are, are going out of MLG. They're not making it in, into MLG. And I, I feel like it's that's mm. because they're very casual. They have a lot of elements yeah. to just get people in but not really keep them in. One thing that's not helping many of the con well, the console jo game developers out and such is the fact that they're getting a bit lazy on the games they've been pushing out. Like, uh, well, I wouldn't say it was really. I, in personal opinion, I wouldn't say it was bad, but many fans of the Halo franchise got very turned off when Halo 4 came out. Absolutely. Oh, and I actually just the other day, I I want to I want to kind of put this in this video because I really don't believe I can make a video. I've been trying. Because I, I know I told you guys on YouTube that I would make a Halo 4 video. And every time I do, I'm literally sickened. Like, it, it just basically yeah. gets to the point where I'm literally... I can't even talk anymore. I can't commentate. So, it, it's literally... Halo 4 was a disgrace to the Halo series. I lost a lot of trust in, in 343. I'm hoping that, you know, they can I hope they do something. Themselves. But... It, basically, Halo 2 Anniversary is my biggest hope for this point for some redemption. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, like you were saying, Bazinski, I, I think you were actually very nice about it. I'll say as a Halo fan that Halo 4 was a massive disappointment. And, Halo uh, 4 was a huge well, slap to the face. It's not it like I don't know about Halo, because I played Halo 1 and 2 on the right. PC, and I went on with Halo 3 on the uh, on the Xbox the only game I didn't really get was ever was Halo Reach so right. I'm not sure if playing that would have changed my opinion on Halo 4 but no I it wouldn't have it didn't me. seem all too bad for me I, enjoy, I enjoyed it as a separate game it, it, if it was what people were expecting if people were just expecting like Watch Halo 3 spy behind graphics, us, behind us. he's going to be different he's um it it's just a game that fundamentally broke down on mechanics and this was actually something we were talking about last video, me and Drake, about how mechanics are, are different between the PC and Xbox 360. But what Halo made a mistake of is not that, you know, change can be good for a franchise, but what they really made a mistake of is they brought things like basically the care packages in that destroyed the skill curve. And if the skill curve is destroyed, then the game is doomed to be casual. And, you know, I mean, Halo was an MLG game. Most Halos have been on the MLG circuit. So for me, for it to just be reduced to this point is just is insanely sad. I mean, it, it's it's amazing that they took that direction, in my opinion. I was shocked uh, yeah. and, and distressed. That would probably be where my view was different than as to I never played it really too competitively. I would play it on the case of when I was actually looking to have a just a fun time. So Right, and I think that's what they were casually. primarily going for as people that were playing it just casually, yeah. in my opinion. But then there's a the competitive gamers like me that I've I play to win. I don't play that fun. I play to destroy the enemy. <laughs> I play. Yeah. I play. I play this. I call it. You know. And I actually think. Uh, what's that guy's name on um, Gears that I really I really enjoy his motto. And basically his motto is this. It's it's Abram. Uh, just so somebody thinks that I'm, I'm not you know plagiarizing him. But he says we play for fun, but we play to win. And that's something that to me is a, a big thing that I support is that fun one and Vala, playing. One yeah, one was yeah. Vala. I mean, playing to win and playing for fun should not be two separate things in my opinion. I mean, that's pretty much two things of the same basic concept. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And that's what I, I think people is are, are getting away from. For me, playing as a team and playing together is part of, of playing for fun. So I just don't understand this concept that like, oh, you know, we don't need to worry about it being competitive because we're just playing for fun. What does that mean? Yeah. Is it does it mean that basically the whole game is about trolling the opponent? Because I think that's what a lot of games are getting to be is like these little noob slap in the face. Where it's like I think the yeah. yeah. sort of... game that comes out and is mainly supposed to be just uh, created for the purpose of fun seems to be a, a good idea. Is the fact that with many games, uh, you'll notice many gamers nowadays, people can take it far too far competitively, and they will like if they ever lose, they just take it as if they've lost a civil war or something. It's oh, yeah. just, they take a games far too far. Well, I, yeah. I think what it is too is that not not so much that they take it so far, but there's just people that have there's no other way to say it, just bad sportsmanship. Like they literally they rage quit and that's that's the personality. You know, you, you, you would hope that this is just in games, but I really think these are this is how people are like in real life. I, I don't think it's the game that is the problem. I think it's that, you know, you, you if you get to the point where you're raging on opponents and you know you're uh, you know cursing out your team for losing one game when yeah. you're playing like social slayer then you know that might be something you personally need to think about that's probably not got anything yeah. to do with the game you know what i'm saying yeah oh, no. Hydra, if you're wondering who i'm talking to in chat two of my friends are on the game oh that's cool man yeah wow sentry's just tearing me up right now Drake plus Stranger Hydra gets Bambi. Oh. Uh, I'll take out that sentry right now, though. All right, man. I sounds good. Sounds good. All right, we still got four Sen minutes. We're, we're pushing up pretty good. I mean, we're doing pretty good. Whoa, yeah. latency. So that was crazy. But anyway. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is so cool, too, because I feel like we're getting into the era uh, of the, the Twitch era. And they are like, I've never personally done a try commentary. I think this is fantastic. Definitely. It's just amazing, really. Oh, oh, we're pushing it. Good job, guys. There we uh, no. go. There we go. Win number one. And that, so that's well and good for you. I was on the other team. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. oh. You have to switch, man. You have to switch. So yeah. But another thing I want to talk about though is just um, how a community can be pretty good and. And this is this is one of those things, you know, you guys might be wondering on YouTube, why am I playing Team Fortress 2? Why am I playing League of Legends right now? Well, there's a big reason, you know, like what Drake was talking about in another video. You know, on these games, you actually have a lot of people that are fairly courteous and make the experience enjoyable. Um, obviously, Halo, I thought, always had a, a strong community, and that was a big positive yeah. for it. But, like, you have so many games nowadays where the community is just... You know, evil trolls or they're just jerks. Like you were saying, you know, 360 degree no scope, you know. Oh, uh, Hydra, you Hydra, know. Hydra, oh, Hydra. The, no. Yeah. You said it wrong. 360 no scope YOLO swag. <laughs> you'll find that <laughs> gamers, will, you'll have more of a chance of coming across some light hearted gamers when it's like, because, like you example, you said, League of Legends and Team Orders 2. Since they've gone free to play, any person that just exactly. wants to have your um, will load up a game will play it. So you'll have a much more bigger community on those things. Exactly. And that's one thing that, even yeah. though I don't want to say this, you should never compare PC or computer of any sort with any consoles because it's, it's not the same. Why? You never compare that because there's so many different things. But for the PC, the all so wide, vast amount of free to play FPSs and MMOs now Whoa, we're gonna really now. boosts. Yeah, definitely. That. PC community. And this is a thing, you know, all the, the consoles are saying, and of course, I'm hugely planning to put out, you know, content for the 720. I'm planning on purchasing a 720, so I don't want to make it seem like in a bad way. But this is the thing is, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, prices are going to go up for the 720. You know, that's just the way game design is nowadays. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, then how on PC are they having free-to-play games and these models are working? You tell yeah. me that. You know what I'm saying? Like that developers, like something's a little bit fishy when developers are saying this. I really, you know, I really wish developers wouldn't say that because more and more that's proven untrue. That you're actually having a lot of great games that are working on microtransactions. So how is it possible? How are you telling me that like 
you know, prices are actually going to have to go up on the next generation. It, it really is beyond belief. Like almost yeah. the the like what these people are saying. It doesn't make any sense. No. I, I have no idea where medic is. And you know, it's a it's a cool thing too because you know you hear about these games that, like you said, you know they're free to play, so more people can get in, so the community is better. So your natural yeah. inclination would be to think, well, the community must not be competitive then. Well, look at Team Fortress 2 and League of Legends. That's anything yeah. but true. It's Team actually Fortress more 2 competitive. Us, it's exactly. And League of Legends is highly competitive. And Dota 2. Uh, me and Bazinski was just talking about this. Dota 2, still being in what in essence is beta, is has a huge competitive community. An insane community yeah. at this point. The noise are the three best examples in that scenario, though, as to no. the League of Legends and Dota 2 were built for the competitive That's uh, fan base, and yep. Team Fortress 2 was originally a pay for game. That's before true. It went free yeah. to play. How about. Team Fortress 2 first came out, th this game was meant to be com a comedy first person shooter, and now look at it. They have Highlander tournaments, all this stuff. <laughs> Team Fortress it's... 2 has such a huge fan base. The amount of yeah. films People. and videos you'll I mean, see. You can online, just be yeah. playing at like 1 a.m. and and find games. It's crazy. Like oh, yeah. you know, it's 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 insane. When I stay up all night, do like marathons and half marathons, I'll be up at 2:30 a.m. About 50,000 full surfers. I have trouble finding a server that's empty at 2 a.m. How big the fan base is on TF2. But you know, so that that's what. But but let's let's look at. Let's just take an overview. Let's kind of recap what we're talking about. Like let's let's list some notable games on the PC. Counter Strike, Team Fortress 2, League of Legends, Starcraft. I mean, what 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 is the the common thing you're noticing about these games? They tend to be pretty competitive. They tend yep. to be have a steep learning curve, but a lot of fun once you get to understand the mechanics. Oh yeah. Now like, look yeah. at look at games on the Xbox. You tend to be actually going in the opposite directions. Games that like anybody within five minutes you can understand how to play. But the problem is that big thing that will always differ from consoles to PCs is you, you'll never be able to have that level of competitiveness without a mouse and keyboard. Why? Because with yeah. a, just a, a, con with a controller, your sensitivity and stuff is set. You will move the joystick and it'll just fill that space. Where on a PC, it's no matter how fast you're moving your hand. Exactly. So it's all depending but on. But this is an interesting yeah. thing about it too, though, is that, you know, and I, I completely agree in one sense because, I mean, the mouse and keyboard has the potential for more skill because it doesn't use auto aim. But there have been a lot of great, uh, there have been a lot of great um, console shooters that have been highly competitive in the MLG scene, even with auto aim. So it's not like developers, you know, they're almost getting an excuse now where it's like, well, it's a console game, it, it's not meant to be competitive. No, it can be competitive. It's just you're not programming it to be competitive. You're I mean, programming it, it to be very, you know, kind of casual in essence. And like going back to uh, Halo, that game never meant to be competitive. Look at it now. It's an amazing. Yeah, Halo did it's amazing. like Halo Combat evolved and Halo 2 were also for the PC though as well. That kind yeah. of gave off a boost into it. But look Definitely. at look at really where the MLG community was primarily centered was always on the Xbox. I mean, I mean it was still the the majority of players have played Halo One PC, yes, but Halo Two it was still mainly for the Xbox. I agree that there was a PC version released, but it was really you know for the Xbox. Yeah. And but 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 it, Halo Two was a classic example of what is. One of the best examples, in my essence, of console gaming. Because console gaming does have an advantage over PC gaming, though, in terms of competitiveness. And, and this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. A lot of people do not talk about this. Is that on the PC, your graphics card, your mouse, your keyboard, there's a lot of things you can have that if you're not playing at an MLG tournament where everything is defined, can give you an advantage. Well, the, the, the Xbox is, if you're not doing mods, is pretty much 
people on a pretty level playing field. So that's a great thing about the Xbox. I mean, yeah, that I love about it. The problem is, is that games are, are not being programmed that way. They're being programmed to try to just get sales, basically, to try yeah. to get people into yeah. the game. And and look at look at things that they're not doing is they're not um, they're not supporting the games enough, in my opinion, on the Xbox. In the definitely, you definitely. know, you have to support your games. Supporting your games is so important because what people don't understand is that builds up uh, community support. That building that builds up faith in your company, in my yeah, opinion. Definitely. And like, look at TF2. We already had a jump start with it, with having it being produced by Valve. That's already yeah. a huge company. A lot of people have faith in it. But these new games that are coming out, like they, people don't know them, but people still buy them. <laughs> and even the games that are total failures, people are still going to buy them and say, hey, look, this looks cool, so I'm going to buy it. Exactly. And that's what the gaming companies want to do. All they want is for their game to look cool. Get sales. They don't care about I, the community or gameplay. I could not agree more, Drake. I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand is that marketing is only important if your game is no good. When <laughs> you put when you put a lot of money in the marketing, what you're telling me is that the game is not good enough to support itself. Because here's how a game should work. A game should work by not looking cool. It should work by, my God, this game is fun, so I'm going to tell my friends about it. And then they're going to start to play. That's the best way the games actually succeed. When games have to rely on marketing, it means that the basic mechanics are broken. Because they have to, oh, this looks cool, so I'm going to buy it. That's what they have yeah. to focus on because the, the basic mechanics are not good enough. To really, you know, you're not yeah. going to recommend it to anybody. No, no. But one I thing th that doesn't help many people out though is that many people just deter, like push forward for graphics because some exactly. gamers demand yeah. graphics from a game. Graphics, graphics are not the most important. Game. No, they're not. They're absolutely not. It's not even. It's not the first thing you should be worried about. It's not the second thing you should be worried about. Now, though, and I do I do say this, though, that just because graphics are not the most important thing, though, doesn't mean that I support this opinion like a lot of people do, that we shouldn't have a new console because the Xbox 360 is fine. Because what people don't understand is that you're not I limiting the graphics. I don't think they're against a new console. I oh, think yeah. they're against it being pushed out so quickly. I think the Xbox 360 itself can be pushed out for another year or two. The Xbox 360, in my opinion, I mean, seven years is is ancient. Look at PC components of today compared to the, you know, the 360 is is a dinosaur by comparison. <laughs> I think it's yeah. been out for plenty of time. I think that the the thing is about it, and this is this is a huge area of contention, is that what people don't understand that that what the the suffering in game design because by not allowing the new console to come out. You're inhibiting the actual game design, not graphics. Graphics, I'm not, I don't care about at nearly to the level that I care about the game design. You know, by limiting that memory, you're not allowing the gameplay developers to get games to their full potential, and that's why I want the 720. To one come out. of the main things yeah. for the Xbox 720, though, one of the main thing that encourages, uh, that encouraged it to be out soon was. Due to the Unreal and uh, Unreal 4 engine, right, and basically right. how newer engines now, basically, I mean the the long and short of it is pretty much the Xbox 360. Yes, it could be out for a, not a year or two, but pretty much we've seen its heyday. I mean that's the honest truth in my opinion. You're not going to get too much more out of it out of seven year old software and seven year old yeah. hardware in my opinion. I, it just there's only a certain amount you can, you know, you know, you're kind of beating a dead horse yeah. at that point. Now, d don't get yep. me wrong. I think it looks great as it is. I think the games produced are fantastic. But I do believe that, you know, the 720 can be better. And, you know, it's always that fear of change. We don't want the 720 to come because we feel, well, it might be a piece of crap. But it could be the best console we've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited yeah. about Definitely. it. Definitely. And obviously, you know, now as we're getting towards the end of the commentary, because we don't want to make this like 
yeah. huge, yeah. huge commentary. But what do you guys think about the Steam box? That should be our last uh, topic. I didn't do too uh, much well. research on it, but well, it... I will say right here now that that does. From what I originally heard, I thought it was going to be good, but from what I now hear to be, it seems a bit too much. Like it just, it seems like it's not going to be able to do that too much. It's just like a small thing to get. And it's not. Why? Well, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Too well. Well, I don't really want to put this out, really, because it makes me come off as kind of a bad guy. But I just well, want to say I probably, I don't really think about really being any worse to get any future consoles up because. With a PC, you're never gonna go wrong. It's just gonna That's always true. be a computer. But for the consoles, it's just they're just gonna keep pushing out more and more stuff, and it's just a huge drain yeah. of money. And then, what like the 360? Many people are scared because of all the Microsoft points and stuff they put into it, and it's just Definitely. like um, it's just too much mo money, and like it's uh, be better off continuing on just my PC gaming. This is an interesting thing. Maybe mm -hmm. twenty thousand Microsoft points. Well, and the new console spy, comes yeah. out. What do you want to do? Yeah, it's true. All and right. what I hope Xbox 720 does is I hope they let people transfer their points. Me too. I, I think that there's got to be some point where, you know, you, you should be 100% rewarded for being a long-time oh, Xbox. Customer. Exactly. If, if they don't do that, that's a mistake. That's a real big mistake. Oh, yeah. That look at PS3. That's a classic mistake. You know, here's what it is. They say you, you can't. Know, you can like you can accept that they never did anything for people who played the original Xbox. Then went on 360 because the original Xbox didn't have that much multiplayer. At no, all, and the, in the retro, it was the too, first but... console, and you know they were, you yeah. know, pretty much they were starting out. But the 360, it's been out for seven years. People have put in hundreds, if not in a lot of cases, to be totally honest, thousands of dollars into the 360. I mean, if, if yeah. you total all the games I probably got for the 360, it's probably well over $1,000. I oh, bought yeah. two Xbox 360s oh, yes. and probably 30 to 40 games. So, I mean, at yep. that point, you have to give the fans something. You have to say, okay, there's a reason that you're gaming on this console. And and this is a very interesting thing, too. People say, well, the, the cost of a PC is so high. But Drake and Bazinski have brought up some really good points about this though in that that's what people don't realize is that let's say a pc right so let's say the next year i can upgrade one component of it get better performance for maybe let's say a hundred bucks well on a console it's an all or nothing sort of deal so yeah. even though the pc is more expensive in the beginning Actually, long run, you're probably better off no with the PC. PC yeah, no. purely just for Well, unless they are just like a person who just wants to game. No one buys a PC purely just for gaming. A computer exactly. does so much in someone's life. It's and just, that's what's nice about it is that you can. A computer is a computer. It's like you don't think of it as a game console. A computer no. runs games and stuff, but that was a secondary thing. A computer is yeah. a computer. This is what's nice about, you know, a nice desktop PC is, you know, you can be, uh, you know, playing League of Legends while you listen to music, you know, and then chatting on another channel. You can be doing like five different things at once with a good PC. Yeah. And that's something that I think consoles are generations away from. Like, I don't even think we're really very close to consoles being able to do that. Now, will they be able to do that sometime in the future? Of course. But by that point, the PC will be able. You'll put on like a virtual reality headset. Yeah, I know. They'll be able, able, able to like, yeah, uh, you know, exactly, well, actually, like something crazy. I believe it's called the. I want to say Oculus, or I'm not sure if you heard of it, but it's a VR headset, and it's compatible with the PC and TF2. VR and is going to yep. be the future. I mean, VR, in 20 to 30 years, everybody's going to be using VR. VR is the evolution of gaming. We're well, not Hydra, going... It's, not even know. 20 or 30. You could be within the next 10 or 5 years. There's well, the Oculus headsets. V VR, though, optimized. when it comes VR to is going to take some though, time. You can't go ahead and say too yeah. soon a year. It's many gonna, predictions yeah, from human definitely. history yeah. have been far many years old. Uh, what, 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 what yeah, if you look at human history, what have predictions been? Too short or too long? If I have to make, exactly, if I have to make a prediction, I'm going to overshoot rather than undershoot. Because in the majority of cases, that's the correct way to go. Is that, like you said, the majority of predictions have been optimistic. You know, oh yeah, it's going to be here in five years. thought that by now we would all be on the moon, so that's proof by then. Right. 
This but is it is it is it a logical thing? Sure, yes, it is. It just was one of those things that they were a little bit too optimistic. You know, if you, if you're optimistic to a certain extent is good, but at a certain extent, yeah, VR is still yeah, going to take some exactly. time to be implemented. Not because it couldn't be implemented, but you have to remember this though: it's not about being implemented; it's about being implemented affordably. Can they actually get VR headsets? that are cheap enough uh, so most people can afford them. Because you have to have a certain amount of people be able to afford them to just even cope with, you know, manufacturing cost. Definitely, definitely. So I think right now, I think we should end the commentary because we've been going on for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I died. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. this is Stranger Hydro 9, and uh, it's been... T.R. Bazinski, Drake, and Stranger Hydro 9, please leave comments and or likes if you like this. Please also go check out T.R. Bazinski's channel, um, and I'll leave a link of that in the description. Um, he makes a lot of cool commentary videos and also just videos for fun, which we all, yeah, it can't always be serious. So anyway, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. I'll point I'll out to the audience that my videos are much less serious than this. They're just wow. really for fun. Which add both are good. Steam if you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You add us all on Steam, on Steam, and uh, hope to see you guys next time in our League of Legends yep. videos. See all right. Bye, everyone. Bye.